Notice requirements of the Open Public Meetings Act have been complied with and satisfied in that the annual notice, which gives sufficient notice of the time, place, and conduct of all public meetings of the New Brunswick Parking Authority, has been filed with the City Clerk, has been placed on the appropriate bulletin board in the lobby of City Hall, New Brunswick, New Jersey, and has been transmitted to the official newspaper for the City of New Brunswick, namely the Home News and Tribune, as per annual notice provided in a resolution adopted by this governing body on December 29, 1975. After everyone. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, let's call meeting to order, read the public notice. Uh, the meeting uh, minutes from June uh, 2017 regular board meeting were distributed by email. Uh, I would look for Make a motion. 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 Second. Second, thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, executive director's report. Yes, you okay. Thank you, Lou. A uh, few items. First, at the Wells Fargo site, as you know, we're looking to demolish that, that building, which was the old drive through building for the bank. Uh, right now, we're awaiting PSCG shut off so they could uh, go ahead with that demolition. Uh, we're looking in the interim, after the demo, to surface that lot. And uh, we calculate we'll get about 25 parking spaces in that lot. And our plan is to put single space meters. We have uh, some single, we have at least 25 single space meters that we put in that lot. So that's, that's what the plan is. So I'm sure I'll have more information at the next meeting on that. As far as the Ferron lot, as I mentioned before, we're looking to reopen that as well. But before we can, the county needs to remediate the, uh, as you know, there's a diesel fuel leakage that came from the old administration building. So the county is responsible for remediating that. So they need access to the, to the, lot, to the uh, site through the Ferron lot. Uh, so until that remediation work is done, we really can't move forward yet on uh, reverting that back to a uh, public parking lot. But uh, I'm waiting to get an idea of when that book is going to be uh, scheduled for. Uh, once, and this goes for both lots as far as Wells Fargo and the Ferron lot, that once uh, we're ready to move forward with a parking lot, we have to get lighting in those lots. So that will be also working with PSCG to get some uh, street lights in, into those lots. All right. Um, as far as the New Brunswick uh, Performing Arts Center site, I don't know if you're aware, but the demo began uh, specifically at the George Street Playhouse. Um, ultimately, once construction convenes, we, we're going to have to remove, uh, or take 26 spaces out of service from the existing TD bank lot. Uh, in, in place of those 26 spaces for the bank, we are arranging for 17 spaces in the city hall lot to be used for our construction until the garage is open. Um, <clears throat> there will be a driveway added basically between the TD bank and the city hall lot. There's a fence that separates the two lots. Uh, a portion of that fence is going to be removed and a uh, driveway put in, like a makeshift driveway, into the city hall lot from the TD bank lot. So, Customers coming into the TV bank lot, uh, if they can't find spaces adjacent to the TV bank, they'll be making a basically a right-hand turn into the city hall lot, and then those first 17 spaces behind the booth, if you're familiar with the lot, 17 spaces behind the booth will be for bank customers uh, only. Uh, in the meantime, the city is looking to relocate 17 of their employees uh, between the New Street and the Wellness Street garage. Uh, that'll make room for those 17 spaces. Uh, the other, the other note that I had, I did mention that we'll be removing 26 spaces from the TD bank lot. Uh, 17 of those spaces are going to be filled by the city hall lot. The other nine are for bank employees, and they're going to relocate to the wellness garage. And that is going to be the uh, permanent permanent setup until the new. Um, New Cultural Center Garage opens. All right. As far as our restoration project for 2017, we're moving along with this. Uh, the two larger of the two largest portions of the of the work is at Wellness and Patterson Street garages. 
basically dealing with joint sealant repairs, uh, partial death repairs, static cracks, uh, some waterproofing. And that work is about 75% done at this point in time. And it's been going along smoothly. Uh, residential permit update, just to let the board know, as of this morning, uh, we have uh, approximately 4,000 permits out. Um, we're expecting, as I mentioned at previous meetings, we're expecting a much uh, larger demand once uh, August rolls around and the students start coming back into the city. That's what we always get that last week uh, prior to school starting. We always get a uh, mad rush of uh, students coming in, or I should say tenants coming in, not necessarily students, but the majority of them are. Um, coming in for the parking permits. So I, I expect this to be probably get close to at least 7,000. Total seven us. Yes. Uh, just a heads up, I don't know if you've, uh, I, I received a number of phone calls. Uh, evidently there's a sign up at Superfresh that says that it's under new management. Um, so I was asked if uh, there's a new ownership and uh, I said, not that I know of. Uh, so I called the current owner who assured me is not under new ownership, but what he meant was that there's a new manager at the store. So the new manager at the store, he, uh, he explains to me he's looking to improve customer service. So uh, he hired someone who he's familiar with, who worked in his other stores that uh, is very fluent in Spanish and feels that, uh, you know, better improved communication with um, much of his uh, customers. So that's what he's, uh, that's what he meant by under new manager. So that put a lot of people at ease. Uh, I understand this store is doing well, and uh, I'm, I was told by the owner that, you know, he's pleased with the results of the uh, sales at this store. Uh, the uh, ongoing new street curb cut, I know that came up uh, at the last meeting. Uh, we had, we had a sidewalk repair in the front of the New Street deck on New Street, also Joyce Kilmer. Uh, that sidewalk repair turned into a uh, major project. Basically, the city request, requested us to put in a new handicap ramp on the corner curb cut. Uh, when we did so, they weren't happy with the design, so we hired a civil engineer who worked with the city to uh, come to come together and form a, uh, a acceptable curb cut. It's actually not where the current curb cut is. That makes sense, it's been shifted over. So in order to accommodate that new curb cut, they had to remove the old public phone booth, or lack of, not booth, but that's a pole with the public phone. Um, that's probably before you're coming. <laughs> anyway, um, so we had to remove that and then, so that basically where the curb cut will be. So it's not technically on the front, it's kind of off on the corner. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's what the city requested. So right now we're waiting for the, uh, the uh, markouts for the utilities. And right now the plan is they're supposed to come out tomorrow. I was told that Friday it's supposed to rain. So since it's raining, you don't do cement work. So right now, Monday, it looks like the day that we could finally finish that job. And that is all I have. Very good. Thank you. Any questions? Otherwise, um, one of the committee reports, uh, Finance Bright, and then we distributed the, the current financial financial June was emailed. <coughs> uh, the revenue for six months is 78 million. The expense of 11.8 million so far. Uh, we're kind of overall uh, slightly about the uh, budget for the net income. Any other any questions? No. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you, Brett. Okay, anything on uh, legal today, Len, uh, that you need to address? No, not legal. Okay. All right, that brings us to public comment. We have a couple members of the public. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Charlie Cranville with New Brunswick and Brunswick Today. Um, uh, just a few questions today for you. Uh, can anybody tell me the total debt of the authority presently? We hope that we can get that to you. We, yeah. I mean, that's yeah, not something you know what to um, When will the fiscal year service list be available for 2016? What, what do you mean by that? It list of all vendors that uh, get more than $17,500. 
Well, that's that's on a rolling basis. It's filed with the with with the state. It's not it's not unless that the parking authority maintains each individual vendor is compelled if they in fact do that uh, amount of business over that number. You're the pay to play. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That's right. Right. While that is true, there's also a statute that requires it to be uh, the authority to to compile a list and put it on the website, and that has been done for 2015. But oh, right. I've yet to see the 2016 right. one. I just want to know when that. Right. Will be. Next question. Right. We will. Okay. We will work on that. Yeah. I don't. Want, you know, obviously, we'll do this so it's great. <laughs> okay. And uh, and so does that mean that the audit's not done yet for no, 2016? The, the audit stuff. Yeah. That's okay. The audit's done. It's been published. It's, it's been just not put on the website. We do have the list. Done. Yeah, we have the list for the 75. The audit's on the website too. Uh, but the list is not. So we'll audit's on the website, not yep. the list. Okay. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll keep checking. If, if you'd be so kind as to just shoot me an email when it's up, that would save me all the checking. You got it. Thank you, sir. Uh, I, no, I saw something for the first time um, that I'd never seen it before. A parking permit, I believe they issued by this authority, says all wards on it. Can you tell me about those permits and how many of those are out there and, and what those are for? I have to get back to you as far as the number. All wood basically it means it's a person who does service within the uh, city. So it's like a nurse uh, so from an outside firm, a uh, real estate agent, if you will, so they can park anywhere in the city to show a house, to, to help, you know, to uh, tend to a care to a patient or something. So okay. And, and, uh, uh, They've been around. around. They've been around. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, can, can reporters apply for them? Can reporters apply? Yeah. If you have a business that, that requires you to go around town, I, I would see why not. Okay. Great. All we need is your business card and, uh, on, and a copy of your letterhead. Okay. You get to go. Sounds good. Thank you. Um, and uh, yeah, glad to hear Key Food or Super Fresh is doing well. That's, uh, that's great news. Um, thank you. Thanks for that's all. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. <coughs> Um, all right, any, we have any board discussion this evening? Otherwise, we will move on to resolutions. You want to uh, to take. Yes, please. Thank you. Uh, Mitch, do you want to just provide a quick overview? Do you want to do a uh, consensus? Up to you. That's up to you. I, you know, I, that's, that's entirely up to you, the commissioners. As far as I want to do this. Okay. Well, Payment resolution, that's straightforward. Uh, we'll just outline the option of surplus. Sure. It's a so single vehicle. Or? We've done this numerous times before. Mm -hmm. Basically, when we're uh, taking a vehicle out of off the road, uh, usually due to um, its <coughs> very useful use, and it's trying to cost additional money to repair. Uh, in this case, let me just bear with me. I got to pull up our backup here. We're, we're talking about 2013 Jeep Patriot. Uh, so we're looking basically to put it out on the uh, U.S. Gov bid website. Uh, we found it to be uh, uh, very successful when we do that. Yeah, we've uh, done that in the past. We've done it yeah, yeah. numerous times. It's an acceptable practice by the state to do that. They recommend it actually. So. Okay. And then the other uh, resolutions, three and four, we voted on those last month. Now this is the findings. Yes, the, uh, the local finance board, we appeared in front of the local finance board on June 14th. Uh, the local finance board uh, found positive findings. Uh, so this is basically resolu excuse me, resolution acknowledging the, the positive findings of the local finance board. Well, uh, resolution number three is for the $23 million city guaranteed parking revenue bond. And number four is the resolution for the uh, $3 million, $900, not to exceed, I should say, $3 million, $900,000 uh, subordinated project notes. And that's to purchase Wells Fargo and 75 Patterson Street. Okay. Uh, so unless anyone has any questions, I would just offer that we uh, ask for a Motion to accept all four resolutions. This evening. Thank you. Second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Thank you. Okay. Um, all right. That brings us to old business pedestrian bridge. Do you have an update? I, I do have sure. an update. There it is. Okay. Okay. Update different than my previous updates, <laughs> which is usually not an update. Um, so, as you know, I signed a, a design phase agreement with Amtrak in order to for them to look over your your plans, you have to uh, sign this agreement. So they, we finally executed that. 
So in the meantime, we've sent Amtrak a 30% design plans for the uh, for the bridge, uh, asking them to review and to get back to us with their comments. Uh, during previously, we had sent that same uh, set of plans to New Jersey Transit, who came back with comments. Uh, currently. They, they inquired about cameras, uh, security cameras. Uh, the plan is to have security cameras. They weren't aware of this from the plans, but we were going to have security cameras on the wellness, in the wellness lobby, looking towards the opening of the uh, garage, and, and also um, inside the pedestrian um, bridge on the uh, platform side. And that would be hooked up to our system here, uh, just a continuation of what we do. Uh, and you know, be fed off the current wellness system. So it's not, so it's basically just paying for cameras, which is the cheapest part of security. So it's not too, uh, it, it's not too costly to do that. Um, that was the plan. Um, they want, uh, they, they're curious to know about the wayfinding signage, just way to the bridge, that type of thing. So we have to address that. Um, they also asked if there was going to be lighting uh, added on the existing railroad bridge, which is, as you know, that's the bridge that's currently there that runs on our Albany and like French Street, whatever it's called down there. But um, we are adding additional lights to make it more, uh, you know, uh, make it brighter at night, especially. Um, and then there'll also be lights on the new bridge, so it'll be pretty well lit up then at that point. Um, but that wasn't on the plan, so that's why I asked. And lastly, they're, they're requesting that the uh, if possible, a ticket machine for New Jersey Transit be uh, installed in the wellness lobby on the second level. So, you know, basically, if budget allows, we would be more than happy to do that. All right. So, uh, remember, we got the four million dollar limit. That's what the money we got. So, got it. Yeah. And I believe we have power there for power machines. Right? Yeah, there's plenty of power. Could, right. So you could just put theirs next to ours and it would work. Uh, yeah. I mean, yes. If, if I mean, the machines, they're going to have to be moved because part of the plan is to put uh, radiant heating on a bridge so we don't want any slip and ice falls. Snow, sure. You know, the ice, you know, snow, or anything. Of course, there are some, right now, the design has some openings in the windows to let air in so it doesn't get all steamy inside there. So, uh, so it's not airtight, obviously, and we don't want air conditioning runs into a lot of money. So we're doing a radiant heating. Basically, it's the same idea of what we did with the gateway walkway, which you know, which is works pretty cool. I mean, when there's a snowstorm, it's the only thing that's not covered, mm -hmm. so it's pretty neat. So we want to do the same thing because it really saves. I think in the long run, it saves a lot of labor and material costs to, you know, to clear out the snow and also, you know, safety-wise, obviously, if people don't slip, you don't get sued. You know, so. That's what that's our plan. So that that was Transit's comments. So we're waiting on Amtrak's comments. Right, and that was thirty percent roughly. So there's still a design process to continue for some period of time before. Yeah, but I think the thirty percent, you know, that's, that's the bulk of it. You know, that's the big, the meaty part, and then the rest was well, you know, the yeah. construction. You know, yeah. you, know, you know, it goes pretty fast from there. But you know, the bottom line is, you also want to have the platform on the opposite side. You want a bridge to go somewhere. Absolutely. So, yeah, that's <coughs> okay. um, Any new business this evening? No, I have no new business. I have nothing for closed session. No right. session. Yeah. That brings us to open session. Uh, anyone have any further comments? Otherwise, I'd ask for a motion to adjourn. Make a motion. Thank you, sir. All in favor? All right. Thank you all.